Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on solving equations that have two square roots. So at first, these look a little bit complicated because after all, you know, what do you do with both of them since your, your x that you're looking for is underneath the square root? But you'll see that with a few quick steps, they're not that bad to get rid of and it looks a lot like solving if you only have one root. So let's look at the process on how the solving will actually work. What we're going to do is take one of those square roots and try and isolate it on one side of the equal sign. That way, when we actually square both sides, uh, the root that we isolated will be completely gone. Now, after going through step one and step two, there actually will still be one more root left. So we'll go ahead and isolate that remaining root, and then again, square both sides to get rid of that one. So it's almost like you're doing these first two steps twice, uh, one for each root. Now this will simply just transform it into a new equation, and you wanna solve this new equation, whether it's linear or quadratic, uh, and get some solutions out of that guy. Then, at the very end, when we get some uh, solutions, you want to check those to make sure that they work in the original problem. It's really tempting to try and skip this last step, but it is required because sometimes you get uh, solutions that do not work in the original. So remember, always check your solutions for these guys, okay? Let's go ahead and jump into the uh, first of my two examples, and we'll see all of these steps in action, okay? So we want to solve the square root of x is equal to 1 plus the square root of x minus 1. So in the first step, I just want to look at isolating one of these roots, and it looks like it's already done. So this root is the only thing on the left side. So in order to get rid of that root, I will end up squaring both sides. So we'll square everything on the left side. We'll put in a pair of parentheses, and we'll square everything on the right side. Now on the left side, it's not too bad. You know, if you square a square root, it's going to be gone and you'll just be left with x. But be very careful with what happens on the right side. If you have two terms in here, then you have to FOIL that out. That way you keep track of your first, outside, and your last terms. Let's see what we get on the right side. So my first terms would multiply and I'd get a 1. The outside terms would multiply and I'd get a square root of x minus 1. Inside terms would multiply, and I'd get another square root of x minus 1. And then my last terms would multiply, square root of x minus 1, squared. Now, that's a really tough step to do, because when you first, you know, take care of the foiling process, it makes it, looks like, it, makes it look like you did uh, a really bad job, and all of a sudden we have even more roots than what we started with. But really, what's going to happen is a lot of these will end up canceling or combining, and we really only will have one root left. So you just have to kind of forge ahead and keep going, okay? So let's see what we can actually combine in this thing. So let's see, the one will combine with nothing, but both of these roots are exactly the same, so I have two of the roots. Okay, that looks good. Uh, I'm squaring a square root over here, so this will just turn into an x minus 1. So as you can see, yeah, we really don't have that many roots left. We only have one. So if we work on isolating this, um, now we can go ahead and try and get rid of it as well. All right, so let's see. I have a one and a minus one, so those guys will cancel each other out. I can subtract an x from both sides. I'll take care of both of those, leaving me with zero equals two, the square root of x minus one. All right. So now that I have the other root uh, kind of isolated on one side, now we'll square both sides again and get rid of it. So square the zero, let's square this over here. So zero squared is zero. Uh, square things over here, I'd be left with four. Square square root, x minus one. All right, looking good, okay. Now we'll just simply distribute our four, so four x minus four. So let's see, uh, I can add a four to both sides. And lastly, divide by four to get that x is equal to one. Okay, so that looks like uh, that's going to be our solution, but we're not done yet. We must check to see if it works in the original. So go all the way back up to the top and everywhere you see an x, go ahead and put in that one. So the square root of one and now we're checking, does this thing really equal what I have on the other side? One plus the square root of one minus one. Okay, so I've put in a one for both my x's. Now we're just checking. 
Uh, so on the left side, the square root of one is one, so that looks pretty good. Over here, one minus one would be zero, and the square root of zero is zero. So I'm left with one equals one. And of course, looking at that, one does equal one. That is a true statement. So I know that this really is my solution. All right, now the hard part about going through all of this is sometimes that foiling process. Uh, and sometimes also getting this new equation and trying to solve that one. For my last example, I have one that's a little bit harder and we'll really have to put our thinking caps on in order to work through the entire thing. All right, for this one, uh, I want to solve the square root of 4x plus 12 minus the square root of x minus 6 is all equal to 6. Okay, so even though I have uh, two roots in this, remember, you really just want to focus on one at a time. And it doesn't really matter which root you choose, just make sure that you isolate it. I'm going to focus on this one first by adding this one to both sides. So I have the square root of 4x plus 12 is equal to 6 plus the square root of x minus 6. Okay, so at least now I have one of them isolated on one side of the equal sign. Now to get rid of this guy, square both sides. So square over here and square over here. Now on the right, of course, this is where things will turn out pretty good. Square and a square root will take care of each other. But on the right side, be very careful since you have two different terms in here, okay? Remember that you want to FOIL this one out. Let's carefully keep track of all the terms of uh, what we're going to get. So 6 times 6 would give me a 36. My outside terms would be 6 square root of x minus 6. Inside terms would be exactly the same thing. And my last terms, I would have a square root of x minus 6, and all of it uh, will be multiplied by another one, so I could just say they're being squared. Okay, not bad. Again, this looks like we've made things worse, but things will go ahead and combine, and it will be better. So 36, uh, 6 and a square root, 6 and a square root, the square roots are the same. So 12 square root of x minus 6, that's a little bit better. And we are squaring a square root, so just x minus 6. All right, so it's looking a little bit better. Uh, we want to try and combine as much as possible. Uh, I can combine the 36 and the 6. That way I'll just have a 30 out here. Let's see. Still got our 12 square root of x minus 6. And you know what? I might as well subtract an x from both sides. That way at least I can, you know, combine a few more things. So over here I have a 3x plus 12. All right, 3x plus 12 equals 30 plus 12 square root of x minus 6. All right, let's see what else we can do to this thing. Uh, well, let's see, I want uh, this new root over here to be isolated. So let's go ahead and start moving uh, this 30 to the other side as well. So if I subtract a 30 from both sides, I'll have 3x minus 18 equals 12 the square root of x minus 6. Okay, so that's a lot better. And now from here, I'd work on uh, squaring both sides. All right, let me get a new board. That way we don't mess up too much of this one. Let's continue with this process. So now that I've got this root isolated, let's square both sides and get rid of that one. Now when I square over here, you know, not so bad. Uh, 12 times 12 is... Uh, 144, I square a square root, and I'll have x minus 6. The other side, however, does have two terms, so that one you will have to FOIL. Be very careful on that one. Uh, these numbers are also kind of big, so be careful. So, you know, 3x times 3x, there's a 9x squared. Uh, my outside terms would be a negative 54x. My inside terms would be another negative 54x. So those would combine to give me a negative 108x. And then my last terms would multiply 18 times 18. Uh, I would get a positive 324. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Uh, now I have this new equation that, that, that does not have any more radicals in it. 
So I can see that it's uh, quadratic. Let's go ahead and see if we can combine a few more terms and get everything uh, on the same side. Uh, let's see, we won't be able to combine too much until we distribute this one over here. So 9x squared minus 108x plus 324 equals 144x minus 864. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and move everything on the left side. We will go ahead and subtract a 144x. And let's add 864. Let's see what that gives us. So 9x squared minus 252x plus 1188 all equal to zero. All right. So I can see that this is definitely quadratic, uh, and these numbers are fairly big. Uh, looking at them though, all of them are divisible by nine, so at least we can make them a little bit smaller. Dividing everything by nine will give me an x squared, a minus 28, and a positive 132. And now with these new numbers, I could go ahead and use the quadratic formula, uh, but I wanna save some time on this video, so I'm just gonna factor this. It factors into an x minus 6 and an x minus 22. All right, so from this we get two possible solutions. I know that x is either equal to 6 or x is equal to 22. Now that was quite a lot of work just to get to those two possible solutions, but we're not done yet. We must check these in the original to see if we can really keep them or if we have to get rid of any, okay? So for the last part, let's go back to the original with our solutions that we found and see if they actually work out. Uh, let's do the 6 first. So I have the square root of 4. I'll plug in the 6. Plus 12. Minus the square root. Here we'll plug in the other 6 minus six, checking, does all of this crunch down and give us a six. All right, let's see. Uh, so four times six on the inside here, that'd be a 24. So 24 plus 12 minus, uh, six minus six would be zero. So I'm looking at the square root of 36 minus zero or just six. Comparing to the other side, are they the same? Well, yes, it looks like they are. So I will keep x equals 6 as one of my solutions. All right, let's do this the same with the uh, 22. So 4 times, we'll put in the little 22 there. Let's see, minus the square root. Put in the other 22 there. Now we're checking, does this thing really equal to six? All right, the numbers are a little bit bigger here, but I think we can do it. Uh, four times 22, there's an 88. We'll be adding 12 to that. 22 minus six is a 16. Let's see, uh, at least that's a square number. Uh, 88 plus 12, square root of 100, nice. And now let's take care of both these square roots. So square root of 100, 10. Square root of 16 is just 4. 10 minus 4 is 6. And hey, what do you know? 6 really does equal 6. So this solution also checks out. And we'll say that x could also equal uh, 22. So this one, we're going to keep them both. All right, so that's quite a lengthy process. Be careful when you're squaring both sides. If you do have two terms, uh, make sure you FOIL those out. Uh, so you get all of your terms. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.